Hi everybody, Josh Rappaport here with Now I Get It Math, and today I'd like to present algebra mistake number four. This mistake comes about when students see a problem like negative three minus five, when they've got these two negative numbers and they're combining them. And students, I found, are very often tempted to think that the answer is positive eight. Okay, now why would students be tempted to think that? Let's try to understand the misunderstanding. It comes because students hear very often that two negatives make a what? Make a positive. This is one of those little refrains that students hear in their pre-algebra and algebra classes. Two negatives make a positive. Why do they hear it? Because teachers say it because it applies to three rules. And what are those three rules? Let's look at that because we want to know where this is true so we also know where it's not true. The three places this is true are, first of all, the multiplication rule for integers. If you've got two negative numbers and you multiply them together, they make a positive number. So negative 3 times negative 5, because you've got two negatives, would give you a positive 15. And quite similarly, for the division rule with two numbers, if you've got a negative number divided by a negative number, you're going to get a positive number. Negative 15 divided by negative 3 is positive 5, because 15 divided by 3 is 5. The third place this also is true is when you've got two signs right next to each other, what I call the neighbor sign rule. And like in this situation here, if you've got 5 minus a negative 3, and see how these two signs are right next to each other with no number in between, I call them neighboring signs. Those two negative signs turn into one positive sign, so you wind up with 5 plus 3, which of course is just 8. So you've got three cases where two negatives do make a positive. Unfortunately, that is not the case here. I wish it were otherwise, but that's just the way math and logic works. So we have to figure out a better way to think about this. And the better way to think about it, what I like to call the true view, is this. If we just think about a negative number as being like a debt, like some money that you owe somebody, this will all make sense and it will help us understand what to do in a problem like this, in all problems like these. Okay, so here's what I mean. If we take the negative three from this problem and we think of it like a debt, that would mean that we owe somebody three dollars, right? Because debt means we owe. And the negative five of the problem would mean that we owe somebody five dollars, possibly somebody else. So all you have to do to get the answer, all you have to do is say, how much do we owe altogether? So you say, all together, in all, you owe eight dollars. Three plus five is eight. And since a debt is negative, that would mean the answer is negative eight right here. And that would mean the answer over here, the very same problem, should really be negative eight, not positive eight. Okay? Now here's the general idea that you want to carry forward with you. When you have two or more numbers that are all negative, what you do is you keep that negative sign and you add the numbers together because it's just like adding debt to get to debt to get more debt. All right? That's how it works. Let's look at one example where you have more than two numbers that are being added in this very same way. Here's our example. If you've got negative four, negative six, and negative eight, okay? So the negative four means we owe someone $4. The negative six, we owe someone $6. The negative eight, we owe someone $8. Let's add this up. Four and six, that would mean we owe $10 right there. When we add on the eight that we also owe, now instead of just owing 10, we owe 18. So altogether, we owe $18, okay? Not what, where we want to be financially, right? So if we owe 18, since 18 is a debt, the answer is negative 18. That means the answer to this problem, negative 4, negative 6, negative 8, is negative 18. That's basically all you have to do to get these problems right, okay? So right after the video, I'm going to provide some references with more information on how you can view problems in this way, in this money-oriented way, and some extra practice problems you can do. But also after the video, I'm going to present a number of practice problems you can do right now, and then the answers will follow that. So I hope you find this helpful, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.